you know, if you've been abused, well, here's the example. I think Bessel van der Kolk uses this one. You're walking down a path and you see a, uh, an object on the ground. It looks like a snake. And so all of a sudden your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up and all the rest of it. And when you get up to it, it's just a stick. But what do you remember, the stick or the snake? You remember the snake. So if you've been hit every time you've said no to your partner, you learn pretty quickly not to say no. And what you've got to do is now take that and put it under your control. And in putting it under your control, you have to learn how to self-regulate. Unfortunately, we don't teach self-regulation. We don't at all, like the concept of down-regulating your nervous system or self-regulating your nervous system is really not common language. No, not at all. That's why I don't have it here, do I? Where is it? Now I don't know where it is right now, but I have a recording that I made of bells and they are timed to five second intervals. So it goes ding, 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 like that, 20 minutes. If you breathe in on the first bell and breathe out on the second, for about 80% of the population, you are breathing at um, your resonant frequency, the frequency at which your heart rate and your respiration rate come into synchronization. Uh, it has a pronounced effect on the baroreceptors on your heart, which control heart rate and blood pressure. So heart rate goes down, blood pressure goes down, and a message gets sent through the rest of the body that says, even in these times of pain and chaos, you'll be okay. And you get a feeling of relaxation and all of the brain chatter that you have about how unsafe you are, et cetera, disappears. So would, would brain chatter, I'm just curious, be like a monkey mind or like a yeah. limbic yeah. loop? Where you're just like yeah. repeating, right? Okay. Busy brain, busy brain. Right. And so, you know, you, if you're going to self-regulate, you got to get rid of as much of that stuff as you can that's uh, drawing your attention. What's the first thing that I do with first responders or ex-military? Teach them to breathe. There's a book out by Nestor. It's called Breathe. Everybody should read it. We should read it to our kids in bed. That's how important it is. There's another one out by uh, Seaburn Fisher. No, not Seaburn Fisher. Uh, Laura Lagos. Um, same sort of thing. Only this one is aimed specifically at uh, elite performers, athletes, artists, business people, because of the huge impact it has on performance. So what my model, my way of thinking about trauma um, goes is, is really straightforward. You know, when you are traumatized and your behavior changes, you know, that's really a good thing because it saved you or it's in the process of saving you. But now that the danger has passed, you've got to teach yourself how to live without responding to every stick on the ground. And that becomes lessons in self-regulation. And so you use things like heart rate variability. You use the basic four, diet, exercise, drink water, take cod liver oil. Those are really important things if you're going to come out of this. 